Hey guys, today I am sharing my top three in every category. I did do this a few years ago and a lot of my products are different. I will have my previous one linked down below and I like doing similar little experimentation series to this. So I believe earlier this year, I did a little mini series on out of my entire makeup collection, which products would I repurchase? And I have done it for the past three years. This year would make the fourth. I haven't done it yet. A little mini series on if I had to cut my collection in half, what would stay, what would go. So the most recent ones will be linked for you in case you want to see some similar things. But I seem to pick slightly different products. And with some of those other series, more products than I am today. And sort of like Angelica Neekfish, she was saying these are her top three as of right now, not necessarily of all time. And I feel like that is the case for me with some of these categories mostly because of what I've been panning. So like for primers and foundations, I have been testing some new things, but then sticking to panning. So there are products in my collection I really need to re-familiarize myself with to maybe re-fall back in love with them. So that's the deal with some of these categories, but some of these are also just staples. Starting with a face primer, these are the ones that I have really loved the most over the years, but I do have other things in my collection I really need to give love to. So next year, this top three could change. But as of right now, for a hydrating primer for wintertime, I really love either the Smashbox Primerizer or the Tarte Base Tape. I find them to be almost the same formula, at least the way they feel and wear on my skin. But I really, really love them. I did use both of them up and then I got this one in PR, which is awesome. Then for a glowy primer, I have some others, but my favorite is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I'm so sad that this was discontinued, but this is a glowy primer that does not make me oily, where a lot of others are glowy and hydrating. Works great and I love the champagne glow. So sad that Smashbox did not pick up the primers from Becca. And then one that I used up recently would be the Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier. That matte primer just works so well for me. It was not a gluey consistency. It was able to blend to the skin nicely. It did not make my makeup go on or wear off in a patchy way. So something I would consider getting in the future, but I do have other things that I want to test first. But as of right now, those were the top three that came to my mind. So for foundation, I've cheated a little bit. I actually have four based on things that I've used this year. So the first one being the KVD Good Apple Serum Foundation. This does give great medium to full coverage but it feels more lightweight on the skin i absolutely love this so much more than the locket tattoo from back in the day i'm in light 008 i also surprisingly really love the kosas revealer foundation which i used up earlier this year it has more of a medium coverage a natural finish it wore pretty well on me the only thing i did not like was the scent and then i do have two skin tints that i've tested and really love this year i have panned some other ones this year i have others that i do think are nice but these were new ones i really loved so the two face Born this way healthy glow in snow and the estee lauder double wear sheer in 1w1 bone really recommend the both of these i think that Too faced gives a bit more coverage than estee lauder but they both look beautiful and wear really nicely on the skin again especially for me being oily so for concealer i have either a top two or a top four so top two would be tart shape tape for under my eyes 12 in fair neutral is the perfect shade for me i forgot to grab that out i accidentally grabbed another concealer instead then estee lauder double wear stay in place flawless wear concealer in one in light neutral is my perfect blemish concealer it sets down nicely where other concealers i feel like i have to layer and layer and layer them on to really get that coverage to stick it is absolutely amazing i've also used this in other shades for under my eyes and it's beautiful and then i also really liked the kosas revealer concealer which i used up earlier this year same as the foundation more of a medium coverage has a natural finish really nice and then i also really like the kvd good apple concealer it is very thin and it is a bit more matte, which I like because I have oily under eyes, but I can see why it would not be for everyone. And I will have my Kosas shades 
in the description box but for this kvd i am in light 105. for powders likely not surprising to you if you guys have been following me for a while my Durham Blend Translucent Loose Powder is my favorite of all time. Amazing for under eyes and the face. It does give a little bit of a white cast on me, so there is some brightness, which I love for under the eyes. This does come in multiple shades, so if you do have a deeper skin tone, and even though that is not a matte powder, I do find that it helps control my oil without making me look dry. And then I love the Remmel Stay Matte. I have tried a lot of different pressed powders for touching up, and this is the best one. It doesn't make my makeup look cakey. I can apply this without blotting and it looks great. I've also used this for setting my makeup and it looks nice as well. I just wish they would update the packaging even if they charge a few more bucks. I think that would be that would be nice. And then I'm fine with just having a top two but if I had to pick a third I would pick the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in Fair. This does give a really nice coverage. It has a smooth look on the skin. It does look a little bit heavier than the Derma Blend because it does have some coverage to it, but I love this. I have been using it this year as a mixer powder of my Too Faced Born This Way and Peach Perfect, which are too dark for me. So this is just fantastic on its own. But if I had to pick just two, I would pick these. Lastly, for base would be setting sprays, and I'm just picking two. I do have others that I've tried and that I've liked, but these are the ones that I want to always have in my collection. Urban Decay All Nighter, I think, is a great long-lasting setting spray, and I love the mister on this. I feel like just the right amount of product comes out for me. And then MAC Fix Plus, I really do enjoy as well as something to melt products into my skin, which I wear a lot of makeup, a lot of powder. So this is a really nice step. So it's great as a primer spray as well, which is not necessary to do, but I really do feel like I wanna always have the two of those in my collection. For liquid and cream cheek products, I have a lot of different bronzer favorites. I have some blushes that I like, but it was not too tough to pick this top three. So the first product I just recently used up, the Iconic London Sheer Bronze in Caramel Glow. This was a great warm color for my skin tone without being too orange. And it blended into the skin so effortlessly. It looked beautiful on top of foundation, didn't sheer it out. I definitely do want to repurchase that. Then for cream bronzer, I feel like one of the most effortless ones for me would be the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I have the color light medium. Just looks so pretty on the skin. I like that it's a little bit more sheer and buildable because I'm fair and have lighter colored hair. I have to be very careful with bronzer around my hairline and I often end up looking nuts. So this is a great, great color and formula. It is a little bit dewy, but I always set my skin with powder so I don't really have any issues there. And then for cream blush, I have a lot of other formulas that I've tried and enjoyed, but my favorite still is the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur blushes. They come in four shades, a mauve, a nude, a pink, and a corally peach. I have all of them and I really like them. It is a cream to powder formula. I feel like it's pretty easy to pick up on a brush and blend into the skin wears really beautifully. There is some jackhammer action going on outside. I am so sorry if you hear it, but as a mom of an infant, it is very hard to find time to film, so I'm gonna try to make it work. So for powder bronzer, I actually had a very hard time. I really love what I have. I want to continue playing with them more, fall in love with different things. I feel like each season there's a bronzer or two that I really like. And I basically just looked at my drawer and I picked out the three that called to me first, but I don't know that I am like singing from the rooftops, these are holy grail, but I do feel good about my picks. So the first one is not available anymore. The Too Faced Sweet Hearts Bronzer in Sweet Tea. This is a beautiful glowy bronzer, more of a neutral leaning warm shade. Two different colors here, I just mix them together. I love how healthy it looks on the skin. Then I really enjoy this M Cosmetics Corselet Sculpting Powder Bronzer in Slip. Again, a great neutral leaning cool shade that works really well for me in winter time. Doesn't look too gray nice and pigmented and blendable. And then this summer, I really loved this bronzer from Vesca, Kissed by Santorini. And unfortunately, Vesca is not around anymore, but this was such a nice shade and a great matte formula. 
for blush this was hard because i have uh, so many favorites and i do have some like staple formulas that i've loved for years but these are the three slightly newer but still tried and true favorites from i think last year that i've worn this year loved just as much so i've got three different like formulas lines not just shades the bare minerals blonders i have all of the original three kiss of pink Kiss of Rose, Kiss of Copper. I love them so much. I am interested in getting the new shade Kiss of Mauve. I swatched Spice and it's too deep for my skin tone, but would look so pretty on more of a medium complexion, but very nice and pigmented, give a beautiful glowy finish without being glittery. Then the new Benefit blushes, I have a ton of them. And these two are my favorites. This color is Pom Pom, it's a matte shade. And Tara has a little bit of shimmer. My third favorite would be Moon. It's a great winter shade. Then I absolutely love the Sigma blushes. So they have six shades that are individual blushes and I have two of them. The shimmer one is Tiger Lily. The matte shade is Sunset Kiss. And then the reason I don't have the other singles is one of them is in a duo. I have all of the blush and highlighter duos that Sigma has released so far. They're amazing. And then three of the other single shades are in the Corday Rosa blush palette. This is the best blush palette of all time for me. I love these shades in here. These two have a shimmer finish. The other four are matte. Such a nice variety of colors, even though they're all like similar tone. This is like the perfect blush palette for me. So pigmented, so blendable, so beautiful. I would love for Sigma to release more blushes and hopefully more like cool tones, pinky tones, mauve tones because Berry Love is like the only blush that is more mauve -y, except for the Alice in Wonderland duo, but I would love to see some more expansion there. For highlighter, we have three different formulas. I'm still a highlighter girl. The first one is the Nabla Skin Glazing in Ozone, a beautiful champagne highlight. I really like how soft this looks on the skin, but it does still show up, so that's a really nice option. And then for more intense highlights, I would love for Benefit to release more shades because these formulas are so good. So the first one is Tickle. It is like a purpley pink, but you do have a golden sheen. And on my cheeks that golden sheen does show up quite nicely so i find that to be pretty wearable and then you do have cookie which is a champagne with more of like a light white flash this one can look very intense and really depending on your skin tone so i would love for them to release some deeper shades more of like a golden a bronze rose gold they can really expand here then I absolutely love the Ofra Highlight Formula. I have a ton of shades, but these are my two favorites. This is The Hills. It's a beautiful champagne golden tone. They have so many like this, but this one I just think is amazing. It's a little bit darker than Star Island, but not as deep as Rodeo Drive. This is supposed to be a lighter version of Rodeo Drive. And then we have Milk and Cookies, which was a collab with Steph Toms. I can use the shades individually or mixed together absolutely amazing this does give a more intense glow but does not look glittery on the skin moving on to brows i have four different products so four pencils the benefit precisely my brow is my absolute favorite i can use shade one or two this is amazing for drawing onto skin and onto brow hairs i mostly use this to draw on the front the tail and shape the brow and then i fill in with something thicker but this is amazing. And then I also really love the Kosas Brow Pop Pencil. The shape of that is so amazing because it is like an angled pencil, but it is skinnier than the Goof Proof from Benefit. So it, it by itself is amazing for lining and filling in. And I love the Honey Blonde shade on me. And then for brow gels, Benefit Gimme Brow is my favorite tinted brow gel. It has some fibers in it to add some thickness. And then for clear, Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, I still think is the best. Holds the brow hairs in place really well. So those are still my favorites. Open to trying new things, but those are my standbys. For eye primer, the first one, my favorite sheer eye primer is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion Original. Recently I used mine up and I just love it. I know there are a lot of drugs for alternatives. I really like that one. I feel like it doesn't feel too heavy on my lids. It helps keep my eyeshadows from creasing and lasting longer. So I am willing to spend the money on it when I can get it on sale 40, 50% off. Then for a tinted option, the Anastasia eye primer is really nice. This is like an 
ivory shade, ivory cream color. I wish this would be in more shades, but I have tried using concealer on my lids. It cakes, it looks creasy, it looks heavy. This does help blank out any discoloration, but it does not feel heavy. This is absolutely fantastic. I really love that. And then I figured I would throw in a shadow stick. You guys know I'm a shadow stick gal. I've tried other formulas and I like them, but the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks are just my favorite. This is a little mini in rose gold, but I have tons of full sizes. They are a little bit pricey. If you ever see these minis as a beauty offer with a $25 purchase, or you see this as a 100 point perk, they are worth picking up because you get as much product in here as half of a full size. So, so amazing. So those are my top three eye primers. So for eyeshadow, I just could not pick from my large palettes, but from my small palettes, um, I'm cheating, but I have some selection. So the Natasha Denona mini palettes, I have loved so much. I have so many of them, but these are definitely my top four most used. Mini Biba, Mini Nude, Mini Bronze, and Mini Star. I seriously get more use out of these than her midi palettes, the $69 ones. Next would be from Flower Beauty, these large six pan shimmer palettes. She just recently launched two more of these. In the picture, they almost look more satin, but I cannot wait to see somebody review these. I'm hoping Jen Phelps. So I'm gonna cross my fingers that it is the same formula because the color stories look really pretty, but I absolutely love these. So this is Jungle Lights. You have some more warm tones here and then these nice purpley shades. I use them all except for the deepest shade. And then you have this beautiful, more neutral tone shimmers. Again, I tend to use them all except for the deepest shade. This is so good for every day. I feel like if you have some good matte shadows and then you have these shimmers, you are totally set. And then I have two palettes tied for third place that are not available anymore. So this first one is the Makeup by Mario Bronzy Glam Quad. I love these three warm shimmers in this nice matte, which is a great outer corner color that I use with my Anastasia Birkin and Bengal. And then of course I had to mention my Aether Beauty Citrine Crystal Quad. Again, three more warm tone shimmers and then a really great outer corner matte for me. So good, so sad that this is a discontinued product that Aether Beauty as a brand is going away, but those are my favorite more go-to small palettes. So next we have eyeliners. I am not very good at using liquid liner often anymore, but my favorites would be the Physicians Formula Eye Booster and the KVD Tattoo Liner. I have tried so many others that really run and bleed on me or my wing disappears because I have very watery eyes. Those ones are fantastic. I love the waterproof and the original from Physicians Formula. If you get theirs, you have to get black as black though if you want it to really show up. But those formulas are so good. But pencil liners are the product that I've been using more. I do not do it on my upper lash line. I just do waterline and lower lash line. I have super watery, runny eyes, and these formulas put up a good fight. First would be ColourPop. I have a ton of shades from them, some more metallic, some more matte. I love the pastel shades in Zulu and Prance. ColourPop messes with my heart and keeps discontinuing them and bringing them back. These are two limited edition shades that I absolutely love and get the most use out of. So this perfect copper shade is Brickell. It was part of a basketball duo. And then the color I'm wearing today is Rosette, which is a rose gold mixed with like a little bit of copper. I am almost done with this one, which is so sad. I will get back because with these, if they come back in stock, absolutely amazing formula and beautiful shades. I know a lot of people don't like the ColourPop ones. They say they break on them. They do break from the base. So just twist up a little bit. Don't be throwing your hand all around and the product will stay in the packaging and just twist up a little bit at a time and you shouldn't have troubles with it breaking off. If you are putting it on the upper lash line though, you might have it break just cause of the resistance and tugging, but I like the formula because it does stay in place pretty well. Next we have the Nabla Cupid's Arrow Liners. These are going to be on sale during Ulta Twin Women Days of Beauty. You have to try some of them. Unfortunately, the pastel shades are no longer on the Ulta website, only the neutrals. So the pastel shades I have would be lavender and mint. 
these, even though they are more white base shades, are still very opaque and pigmented. They didn't need to be layered up a bunch. They look so beautiful. And then for these more neutral tone shades, we have arrow number five, which is a little bit more of a mustard tan. And then arrow number seven is a burgundy brown. And these are a thicker pencil looks like a little smaller than the size of a typical shadow stick but there is a sharpener on the bottom if you want to sharpen the tip i have no issues applying this to my lower lash line or waterline i never feel like oh that's such a thick line beautiful stay in place nicely and they have tons of different undertones and depths of neutral liners these only come in matte finishes i believe and my third pencil liner favorite is from persona they only have four shades i would love to see them expand so they have a black a brown and then for the other matte shade they do have this plum liner which is so beautiful i love this in the winter time and then they have one metallic finish which is bronze this is so pretty and i don't love a lot of bronzes on me but this one has a little bit more warmth to it, which i think looks so pretty and these are really nice creamy liners but they do set down and stay in place quite well like I said, I would love for them to extend the shade range, but I love these two shades. For mascara, I'm cheating a little bit as well. I love layering and volumizing and lengthening mascara. So my top two for volume would be the Lancome Hypnos Drama and the Rare Beauty Perfect Strokes. And then my top three for length would be Smashbox Superfan, the Benefit Bad Gal Bang, and the Lancome Idol Lash or Lashy Doll. I'm not sure what's the proper name for it those are just so amazing so whenever i get little samples i hold on to them i have so many mascaras right now that i'm not in a place of needing to buy full size but i have purchased full size of the lancome and would for all of these others if i could get them on sale moving on to lips i did not pull out any lip balms but my eos smooth stick and sweet mint is just my favorite for in my purse on the go love the texture not too thin or thick love the scent then I really love the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask for Nighttime and I love the Peppermint Scent which was limited edition but they have brought it back for a couple holiday seasons and then from the Permanent Scents flavors I like Berry. And then I also love the Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm. I like the Natural Men's Scent. I find that to be hydrating, a little bit cooling but it does not dry my lips out. For lip liners, if I can only get one, it would be the ColourPop lip liners. I think they're amazing. I have tons of different shades. And my current favorite is Little One, which is a nice peachy nude. But I've had to pick some other formulas. I really do like the Persona lip liners as well. I have all four shades. Almond, the more warm nude, is my favorite shade. And then I also only have one of these, but I love it. The Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Pencil, and this is the shade Daphne. All of these are lip liners that do need to be sharpened, but they're really like smooth sharpened. They don't feel super hard and dry like the NYX Slim Lip Pencils or the MAC Lip Liners. These are a little bit on the creamy side, which I really like because they feel more comfortable on the lips, but I do feel like they stay in place nicely. So all of these formulas are fantastic. For bullet lipsticks, this was super easy. I am very picky about them. I just feel like the way they feel on my lips and the way that they look, especially on the inner part of my lips can drive me bonkers. But these three formulas are great. The first one being the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. I have tried the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips and I just don't love them, but this is so good. So I do have three shades from the original line which do have the shimmer finish this one is bronze glow and then from his cream finish edition I have three shades of those as well and this one is rosewood glow just super creamy they do give nice pigment beautiful shine to them which makes your lips look fuller there is a bit of menthol in there which I like but I know it can dry some people's lips out but I absolutely love this lip product just be careful you don't keep it in your pocket or in the car because it will completely melt. This is a product you can twist up, you can't twist back down, it can be a little bit messy, so just be mindful. Next is something that has been discontinued, which is devastating. They just replaced this lineup, the Buxom Full Force Lipsticks. Check out your TJ Maxx and Marshalls, they might be coming there. This is the shade Heartthrob. It's a really great pinky beige nude. I love this formula. I have a couple of different shades. It just sits so nicely on the lips, gives great coverage, and 
this is a really nice cream finish. I feel like some MAC formulas are shiny, but they feel so heavy and almost too creamy. This is just perfect. Then for a fantastic matte comfortable lipstick, that would be the Milani Color Fetish Matte. And this is the shade Pleasure, just a really nice warm beigey nude really really like this one i would love for them to add more shades to this range so for liquid lipstick i really don't use them a whole ton but i do have some formulas i would love to recommend if you are into liquid lipsticks my number one favorite for years has been the dose of colors liquid lipstick they have an amazing shade range this does completely dry down it's a little bit dry but not as bad as some other formulas and then Something else that is a similar formula would be the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Clouds. This is the shade Rose Nude. I love this color in particular, and I like the applicators on both of these. You can tell it's like this little chair, which just helps to hold extra product and really hug the shape of your lips. M Cosmetics has the same applicator and this dose of color shade is truffle a great nude shade for my skin tone then i have two more so this is the sephora rouge cream lip stain i only have this color 14 blackberry sorbet but they have so many shades it's a very comfortable liquid lip formula it's a little bit more watery compared to those others that are a bit more moussey it has a standard doe foot applicator but i do find these to be very easy to apply pretty comfortable and wear nicely and then this is a newer formula that is so good i would love for them to release more shades the buxom full-on plumping lip matte this is color chill night i don't know how they make a plumping feeling cooling feeling liquid lipstick but they did it this is a lip mousse type of formula not quite like a regular liquid lipstick but it's so so comfortable i feel like this could be my new favorite overdose of colors if they added some more shades but this is really nice i would definitely recommend picking one up to try the formula and lastly we have lip gloss which is very challenging for me i have lots of different formulas that i really love and a lot of different shades so i have a top three but then i have an honorable mention oh i know i'm terrible so based on my top three are the lines i have the most shades from Number one is Buxom. I have several of the lip creams and a few of the lip polishes. I like lip polishes if they're more pigmented. So this is one of the limited edition shades from earlier this year. This is Negroni. These give more of a medium opacity, a beautiful glossy shine. I love that slight minty tingle. And this is one of the only sticky glosses that I really enjoy. It's not terrible, but if it's a windy day, your hair is going to get stuck in your gloss, but I just love the way it looks on the lips. You will have a similar experience with the Lawless Forget the Filler Glosses. This is the color George, which is a little bit more of like a neutral cool nude on me. This is a little bit stringier than the Buxom, so it's a little bit thicker, but gives really high shine and beautiful shades, more of a medium opacity. And then my number one favorite would be the Tower 28 Milky Lip Jellies. I have almost all of the colors. I would love for them to continue to release more. They give a nice medium opacity. They're very smooth on the lips, not sticky at all. So they don't wear for the longest time, but I do not mind reapplying them. This is the color Pistachio. And my honorable mention for gloss would be the Natasha Denona I Need a Rose formula. I have two of the three shades. I have Daphne and Peony. This is the color Daphne it is such a beautiful color but this is such a comfortable formula I also really like this flat paddle applicator you do get about medium opacity it is nice and smooth on the lips not sticky at all I know that these are pricey so I would pick tower 28 over these but I am going to keep an eye out for the shades that she releases because I would love to have a couple of special ones but so so nice and this color is so incredible so guys, I know that this was a long video. I tried my best to go as quickly as possible, but I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've tried these products, I would love to know what your top three are. And I'm definitely interested to see how some of these categories will change over the years. Like I said, especially for like primer foundations, I feel like that could totally change. And then even for bronzer, I was really surprised how hard of a time I had coming up with bronzers like picking three was hard for me even though when I did like how many of my makeup products would I repurchase I came up with like eight bronzers I don't know picking three just felt a little bit challenging so thank you all so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon bye guys